I'm at Grantham Station outside waiting for Mallard to arrive and with me is Henry Cleary. Now Henry, what's your position? I'm coordinator of the Mallard Grantham Partnership, which is the group of local people, heritage societies, the local authorities and the rail industry who've helped to put this together. Right, and a lot of work's gone into it. I mean, just give us an outline of what what uh, is it actually happening here and the amount of work it's taken to get this to, to achieve this. Okay, well, the biggest hurdle we had to overcome was really finding a safe place that Mallard could be displayed because we're standing here right next to the East Coast Main Line and as you can see, it's one of the busiest main lines in England. Uh, it's not a place that you can have people wandering around easily. So we had to create a special area and the, the, the big breakthrough was when Carillion came in and offered to relay the connection between the old abandoned track here and the main line so that we could bring Mallard in from the main line and have it in a safe area. People could get up close and you'll be able to get on the cab, by the way, uh, at the weekend. Uh, maybe a bit of a queue, but I'm sure that's uh, a price worth paying. Uh, and indeed, you'll also be able to get into the cab of one of the Deltics, which is also coming. As regards Mallard, what condition is she in at the moment? Because she's not coming under her own steam, is she? No, she's not. Uh, she's obviously a national icon and has to be treated with enormous care. That's why she's coming by train. Uh, as you know, locomo some locomotives are moved by road these days, but that wouldn't be allowed for Mallard. So Mallard is not under her own steam. She was put back in steam for the 50th anniversary, but for this, the 75th, the view was that that wasn't necessary. There are three other locomotives of the same class that are in steaming condition, uh, and it's safer, and it's probably better in terms of engineering history to leave her unaltered. Because every time you put something back in steam, you've got to renew certain elements. As you can hear behind us, they're still... Uh fitting out the siding so we've got a bit of noise behind us but uh, it's going to be a wonderful event for Grantham isn't it? It's going to be fantastic because Grantham is not only it was not only the place where the record run started but it was a hugely important railway community and that's why we've got the exhibition of photographs down at the George Centre which are well worth looking at. There was something like a thousand people employed here in the 1960s and it's still hugely important from a railway point of view, one of the key staging posts on the East Coast Main Line. And I think the festival will, uh, as we've just heard, you know, it'll emphasise to people just how well connected Grantham is. As regards Mallard and Grantham, I've heard a story, but I'm not sure if it's true. During the wartime, Mallard actually was, uh, was brought to Grantham and kept, uh, kept out of the way in Grantham because they thought it was safer. Well, you're absolutely right. Mallard was based at Grantham Shed uh, from 1943 for, I think, about four years. Uh, and there are many photographs of her in that time. <coughs> it wasn't, perhaps, wartime was not a great period for the railways. They incurred huge damage and so on. But Mallard um, has often been in Grantham. And if you come to the exhibition here on Saturday and Sunday, you'll see some photographs of her in Grantham. Uh, which I think will, I hope, will trigger people's memories. Right. As regards the record run, we all know the fantastic achievement it made, but it didn't try to repeat it, did it? No, I think that was very much due to the Second World War. Uh, Gresley himself wanted to have another go. I think one of the reasons he didn't draw more attention to it at the time is he saw it as one of a series. Uh, and indeed, the driver, Joe Duddington, uh, when he retired, went on, went on radio and said that he thought they could have got up to 130 miles an hour had it not been for the temporary speed restriction. Yeah, that was actually at Grantham Station itself, so uh, uh, it had to start, start the run literally from Grantham, didn't they? Absolutely. And uh, the, uh, the great thing about Gresley is he was always looking for continuous improvement. He was looking around to try new approaches. He's very happy to go abroad, learn from other countries. The, the thing that he really wanted, which sadly was never achieved in his lifetime, was a testing station for locomotives. And it was built, but not until after the war. As regards Gresley, I mean, we always associate him with Mallard, but there's many other engines, i.e. the Flying Scotsman. He designed that as well. That's right. I mean, Gresley was a giant of engineering, and uh, he, he was an extraordinary man. Uh, because he covered such a long period, he was so diverse, 
in his designs. He was willing to go anywhere, look at anything in terms of how he could contribute to improve performance. Uh, and the other thing is he's a very good role model today because he, could, he came from a fairly comfortable, well-off family. He could easily have gone into what might have been regarded as a more establishment career, uh, which would not have been so demanding. He chose to go into railway engineering, uh, and he, he was absolutely passionate about engineering, and that's a great quality to hold up today. Well, as Grantham being an engineering town, I'm sure there were a lot of people who uh, admired Gresley for his achievements. And, of course, Grantham, there were drivers, obviously, from Grantham on Mallard. Absolutely. And, I mean, one of the nice things is that this exhibition, the exhibition in the George Centre, which I think is wonderful, uh, the Clayson photographs, hopefully will trigger people's memories and bring people to contribute some of those memories, which are of great interest to those succeeding generations who obviously weren't able to share that. Tell me, how long has it taken to actually organize this whole event when when did the ideas start to develop we've been at it for 15 months uh, we went through a, a very difficult period uh, last winter when it looked as though the plans were not going to happen uh, mainly because of the site issues and it was really Carillion who came on board at that stage and made it possible well that's uh, a fantastic achievement and I'm gonna have to let you go because I know you're a busy man but uh, we're looking forward. Within the next probably half an hour, Mallard will be arriving and it will it'll be a joy to see. Henry Cleary, thank you very much for talking to me and I wish you a very successful weekend. Thank you very much. I'm with Suzanne Luthwaite. Now, she's the local coordinator for the uh, Mallard Partnership. Well, she's here, Suzanne. <laughs> Hello, Dennis. Uh, she is, yes. Uh, we are currently stood here watching her being shunted into position. So within the next, within the next five minutes, she should be on site. You know, when it came into the station, I think everybody just looked and admired. You, the, the happy faces that I saw, it, it's, it's a tremendous thing, and I'm, I bet you're pleased she's here now. I will be extremely pleased when it's actually in location and stopped <laughs> and I'll be able to relax but yes she's come all the way down from York this morning um, via various different various different routes and the last part was down the east coast main line so fortunately she is now here she will be in position and obviously people will be able to come and visit her over the weekend. Quite a logis logistic thing obviously she had to make the last part of her trip on the main line uh, and I suppose the timings had to be correct because of the normal mainline services. Absolutely. No, they had a time slot that they had to get her down by. Um, and I'm pleased to say, I think they were actually about three minutes late. I don't think I don't think Mervyn will mind me saying that because as I waved to him as he went past, it was about nine minutes past three and he told me six minutes past three. So we'll let oh, him that's off. That's lovely. <laughs> so now at the moment, she's uh, just... Uh, it, to, to put people in the picture, she's gone by Grantham Station, she's probably about a quarter of a mile further down the track, uh, we're talking uh, south, southerly, and she's going to be manoeuvred now. Uh, I say she, she's not under her own power, but there's a, there's a Deltic diesel with her as well, and a, a diesel that's pulled the whole train. Um, it's uh, quite a technical thing here to to actually get her into position isn't it? It is yes they've got to reverse her uh, um, I'm not the technician side of this obviously I'm, I'm more on the on the event side of it but uh, no they've got to reverse her into position we've also got a coach a buffet car of the Gresley era down here as well which has to be moved back slightly so there's going to be a little bit of shunting going off um, whilst everything gets into position but uh, the actual mallard and the deltic diesel that's come down are in the right position so they just need pushing back into place. And you've actually built a special siding for a laid track and everything. Carillion um, have done that, yes. Uh, Carillion have been absolute. without them we wouldn't have been able to do this, but yes, they've literally relayed all of the track. Um, they've tried to cover the surface. Um, I will say at this point that it is a railway siding, um, so anybody planning on coming down this weekend, just be aware that it is slightly uneven, so if you struggle to walk, you could push a wheelchair, but it is uneven, so please be careful. There are some disabled spaces, I know, in the car park next door, so disabled people can get here. They can. The car park, the East Coast Mainline car park uh, adjacent to the site is open. There is a charge on that of £5 for the day. But we also have, so if you need to be close, there are 12 disabled parking spots in that car park. There are four further disabled parking spots down near the station. But obviously that is the car park 
um, to try and get into if you need to be really close. We've got two other, obviously there are other car parks in town, but we've got two free car parking um, car parks available to us, one at Grantham College and one on Hollaxton Road, which are free, and we've got free um, vintage buses doing park and rides. So anybody who wants to just park out of town and then jump on the bus will be able to get up to site for, for free. Sounds as though you've got all your plans in place. It's now Thursday. Saturday, what, 10 a.m. you start? It is, yeah. 10 a.m. till 5 a.m. at 5 p.m. even on Saturday and the same on Sunday. Brilliant. We look forward to the weekend. Suzanne, well done for all of this. <laughs> Thank you. It wasn't just me, believe me. There's an awful lot of people that have done an awful lot of work to get this, uh, this locomotive here. So. Local radio for local people.